testing one, two. Making sure we're all up in this. Welcome to YouTube and Twitch and Steam. Testing failed? No, that's not how this works. <laughs> you guys are fun though. I like you. Don't betray my trust and friendship. Questions on the weapons? Good! Excited to hear that. not going to transition today it's not going to okay it's going to fail and i know that because i forgot to put up my green screen and it'd be embarrassing to show everything behind me that's not organized on the shelves yet oh my gosh welcome everybody to the official rockfish games where we are professional streamers a hundred percent of the time and have never had an error ever with a live audience it's actually impressive how spot on we are uh, all transitions perfect, all setups right where they need to be. Uh, we never make mistakes ever. Uh, 10 out of 10 company uh, would company again. Oh my gosh. What a delight to have you all today. I'm your host and your guide, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. And as every Friday goes, I'm here to deliver and serve you on all things related to Everspace 2's development, the happenings thereof inside of the game, and to quell any sort of expectations or curiosities that you have. So per usual, we open up this door for you to throw stuff at us, ask those questions, um, and if there's anything that's like a little too crazy or you have suggestions even, we will probably redirect you to the forum so we can catalog that approach. We can make sure everything's ironed out in great detail. It's always the best thing because um, we don't want your suggestion to get lost in, you know, a stream chat. That'd be the worst thing ever. So yeah, so I'm here to have a conversation and have fun. All right. Uh, I'm glad we got Nightbot checking out the, the roadmap for Everspace uh, 2's 2021. That's good. Henry Fox all this time. Oh, yeah, I know, right? He's in a room, not in space. Oh, no. They found out. They found out. Shoes in. What do we do? They found out that I'm not actually in space. I'm not actually a floating body, and I do have legs. Um, it's over. The sham is over. We got to close it down. Run. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You guys are great. Thank you for being here. I'm glad you guys like know how to have fun. You know how to engage. Such a delight. Such a delight. So um, let's cover just a little bit of what we're going to be doing today. Main thing is that you guys have been doing some fun stuff with the fusion hook. So I was like, I'm going to try some stuff too. And it's hilarious. It is. It is exceptional. And I hope we don't change this too much. I like how ridiculous we can modify, like we could just go crazy with the in-game physics of Everspace 2. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of what that looks like. Uh, I might I might not go to crazy extremes, or we might, I don't know. Um, but mostly we're gonna be flying around uh, wherever, taking on jobs, doing stuff. We can't do the main campaign. You're gonna see, look at this, X marks the spot, ancient depot. Like, what? what is this? You've never heard of that. That's because it's a mission you don't have access to. This is a mission we are working on for the Kait Nebula, the next system that will be dropping out in, uh, I think the specific month is September-ish. TM soon, realized. Oh my gosh. So we are going to load up um, right, not where we left off, because I had to go get the fusion hook. So... Um, so we're in the area, loud noise, hang on. Okay, thank you. So we're in the area where you can get through the fusion hook. And that's all I'm gonna say on that. 
We are in the location where we get the fusion hook. I haven't actually shown this location on stream yet. Um, but you've had access to it if you are in the early access. It is in Zarkov. And we completed this little thing to acquire the fusion hook itself. This is the fusion hook. Uh, we also, you may notice <clears throat> as we go through here a little bit, uh, there should be a couple of minor tweaks and improvements in the UI. TS has been hard at work making sure that um, how things operate within the UI are doing so efficiently and effectively. Hopefully I can show some of that off. If the game updated before the stream, I don't know if it did or not. Uh, but either way, <clears throat> either way, we're gonna be highlighting the fusion hook today and the physics surrounding it. Good, good, good stuff. Don't use fusion hook without dampeners. Oh, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness <clears throat> so yeah so um we're the there were so many thoughts in my brain i couldn't even translate with the fusion hook the way that this generally operates is that it will attach to a surface about 2000 uh meters away and then it will pull you to that so let's just show that what that looks like so we pull ourselves over to this location and we can get thrown around okay right now i have inertia dampeners on that means i have space brakes if we turn that off we can actually uh ram into things i don't know why that was a weird interaction uh but i'll take it but this thing can throw you real far and real fast if you're not careful so combining this with inertia dampening can produce some interesting and fun and exciting interactions. And it can also come in handy to just reposition yourself in combat. Fusion hook also breaks away when you're not looking at it. So if we pull ourselves over here, for example, and we go like that, it's broken. So long as you are looking at it, it will pull you. So you could do like spin around maneuvers like this, for example. All sorts of wild things, all right? So that's the fusion hook. Just a general, in a nutshell, what it does. This is a new device, again, it's incorporated in the Zarkov update. Um, I guess I didn't say anything, but I, we are gonna be doing a little bit of spoiler territory here. So if you guys are ones who are like, I want to get everything digested once it's all ready, uh, it's gonna be a little challenging. I'll. I'll tiptoe around like i'm not going into the main story stuff but because we're talking about the fusion hook directly today i mean we're we're just cracking into that uh hopefully you guys don't mind about that otherwise i'm not spoiling any gameplay stuff aside from what you can do with the physics okay disclaimer done <laughs> oh reactive armor that's why oh that's right that's right okay yeah, that's a really good point. So it's reactive armor uh, right there. Defensive, no. React, reactive armor is, which, which one's the reactive armor? Friggin' guys, I can't remember re where reactive armor is. But Spoot Knight's right. There's too many, there's too many things. There's too many things. Uh, oh, it's that one, it's that one. Play it safe, it's the second one. It looks right past it. Too much customization. Oh my goodness. Anyway, but also just general um, about the ship that I'm flying. It's, I don't actually know if this is the same thing we flew last time. It should be similar. Pretty sure it's similar. I adjusted my augmentations to kind of balance things out a little bit more. I do want more expertise because I love going fast. Like who doesn't? Um, so we kind of optimized it a little bit more for that. Uh, generally speaking though it's balanced so utility firepower and expertise we had two pips everything else just one and uh now and uh now we need to talk a little bit more about the device itself because we have three different base modes for it okay so the fusion hook fling around your three different modes you have kunai 
which allows you to pull a target in so long as it's closer than 5,000 meters to you, okay? The next base mode is called Arachnid, and it adds another additional charge. This is a charged device, so you can use it three times in quick succession, but then it takes six seconds to regenerate a charge. This adds a fourth charge. And then finally, Reach Extender, which increases the range by 30%. So for 2,000 meters, that means that it, it would increase it to, uh, let's see if my maths is is good, uh, 600 meters, I think. I think that's what that would come down to. So it'd be uh, 2,600 meters at that point. I went to college. <clears throat> and that's how that works. I'm gonna use kunai, especially for some fun enemy shenanigans. Because we had a couple individuals find out that when a stun effect, some sort of stun effect is in place against your enemies, the physics of the game kind of say, okay, it's just a random object. It's no longer operating as a vessel with its own engines. So that's what we'll be looking at. It's gonna be such a delight. Also, Robo Joe, swing an end. I'm glad we had that little conversation last week. It was such a delight. Um, saying here on stream that Rockfish was such an amazing dev team and Eric is super cool on his stream. Goodness, great. That's a lot of praise. Especially because last week you shut off a bomber when I requested. Hey, I'm here for the people. <laughs> Truly, though. Like, this stream is for you guys. And if you do have requests, I can probably figure some of those out. But uh, otherwise, we are just going to... Uh, fly around and do some shenanigans with the fusion hook. We're going to go to pair on four for this. This should be fun. Have a lot of enemies here. Should be a good time. Last time we left at the start of Parasite Quest, will we see it today? You know what, Salt Can? We can probably do that. We can probably do that. So it's based on uh, field of view or a set cone. So you, we can adjust our field of view if we want to, if that's kind of what you're kind of getting at. Uh, field, of, field of view for first person and third person can be adjusted to your delight. How does reactor output scale the recharge of enemy and effectiveness of things? Reactor output scale the recharge of energy. Oh, okay, okay, got it, got it. Um, so basically, let's actually, let's address that and then we'll get into some fusion hook shenanigans. So basically the way that the reactor output works is that this becomes your static output for your independence items. So with 113 energy per second, for your weapons, that means that your weapon, because its energy capacity is 235.4, and here it's 24.5 uh, per second energy consumption uh, when it's not being used, this is effectively allowing you to recharge uh, almost the full high velocity executioner uh, in about two seconds. Okay, that's that's really good. This tuned energy core is like highly optimized for weapons. So 113 per second with a max capacity of 235.4 in this weapon. So that's the direct output there. If you don't have an energy core equipped on your ship, it's like, it's it's incredibly low recharge. Uh, so let me just blast this a couple times. You see the white indicator to the right of the, in, uh, of the targeting radical. And look how slowly it moves up. That's like one energy per second or something like that. It's terrible. Basically, you need an energy core in order to generate energy. And that's what these values represent. And that's the same for your shield output, the same for your boost output, which can then be modified additionally by your shield and your boosters accordingly through the recharge speed of the booster and the recharge speed of the shield. Cool. Fusion hook. Deshra, I'm so happy for you with a new laptop. That's awesome. 
That's awesome. Yeah, this is a really good core, um, especially for weapons. Not so great for shields and boosts, uh, especially because the, per the percentages of the recharge is listed here for the shield and the booster. So that percentage directly modifies the values you have from your energy core, okay? So like we have a recharge speed of 165% for the shield at 54 uh, energy per second, right? So what that means is that recharge speed, 165% is gonna be regenerating at approximately 80 energy per second based on the type of shield we have. Still not as good as our weapons. Still not as good as our weapons. But So if we had like a shield ST like this bound with an energy core that was pumping out tremendous output to our shields, we could like, holy cow, like especially because the capacity of an ST is 727, at least this one is, that means that we could recharge that way faster. So you do have to keep in mind what factors are at place here. Um, obviously the game is meant to be pick up and play and loot, shoot, collect stuff that just feels better. But if you're looking at those intricate details and those numbers, fine tuning is what's going to change good level of play to great and great level of play to fun. <laughs> so definitely keep in mind those values as you're accruing new equipment and modifiers. Okay, now for the main event, let's get some fusion hook action. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have this guy first get, um, let's EMP him first, because that puts him in a state uh, of like no physics, and then we're going to throw him into the asteroid. He went so fast, we almost destroyed him <laughs> from a single pull. <laughs> did he go, did his... Does his model go through the asteroid? Is that how hard we throw him? Did the game just like break? Yeah, look at that. Fun with physics, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my gosh, that's pleasant. We'll just, we're just going to uh, push him back into the wall to drain his shields. Then we're gonna throw him away. Just see you later all the way over there. <laughs> And then we'll just, uh, oh my gosh, here. Just go for another ride. See you later. Come on, collide. Oh, so close. So close. This guy's having a hard day. He went through the asteroid again. Oh my gosh. It's like he's got some sort of modifier on him. This is absurd. Absurd, actually. There will need to be some adjustments here. He's on like half a hit point of health. Just flying through obstacles. Look, he's like, he's over, he was like four kilometers away. <laughs> Game dev is fun. Game dev is a lot of fun. So now we're pulling him back to us and then we're gonna push him away again. Then we're gonna EMP him. This, this is, this is great. Whenever you're able to just like screw around in the game, that's that's where I start getting a lot of my enjoyment, personally. Uh, now, I would argue that Everspace 2, we're not designing it to be some sort of crazy sandbox experience. So just wanna nip that in the bud right there. We're not going for a sandbox game. But we still want you to be able to play around with the tools that you find and just, you know, have fun. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> Throw things around because you can. Uh, also, we've been making some adjustments to the sniper drone, I believe. We had some comments on that on the forums, so you're all aware. We do hear you. We do see that there's an issue with the sniper drones. We were taking care of it. They are a little bit broken right now. Um, an easy way to explain why Sniper Dunes actually got broken, quote unquote, is because we didn't want to put them in with the AI director, as you guys have uh, pro probably realized, since the AI director makes targeting worse for the enemies.
And if we have made the AI director applicable to the snipers, they would never hit you. Unless you were fighting them one-on-one. -on -one. And, uh, well, I'm not sure if that would be as interesting or as fun, right? We wanted there to still be a challenge, so we retained that. But that being said, we are still looking to adjust the sniper drone because that was a temporary solution for it to not just be terrible. Because now it's really freaking good. You're in the mix of a bunch of enemies and you have a sniper drone that almost never misses unless you're pulling some quick maneuvers. As you should be doing, granted, but I digress. So it will receive some adjustments for any of you who are concerned about how that's been coming together. I'll see you later. Look at that, look at that slingshot. <laughs> 6,000 kilometers away. Excellent. Uh, and again, the way that I'm doing this with a fusion hook, as long as you're putting the enemy in a state of, well, stun, their physics, uh, you basically disable their inertia damage. Think of it like that. So here, his inertia dampeners are disabled, and I just slingshot him. Until he gets his ability to slow down. You can tell I'm probably having a lot of fun with this. It makes me happy. And frankly speaking, I wanted to make you guys happy too. Like, this, this, is a, this is just a pleasing thing in this game. Like, just throwing people into asteroids, throwing them out to space. It's nice. Sniper drones chunks too much health. Yes, we are aware. Wait, you can turn off inertia dampeners? Oh my gosh, my boy, Patrick. Do I have some news for you? I believe we changed it to where the default input is the plus button? I think, I think. But yes, if you go in here, you can reassign it so that you can toggle your inertia dampeners. I have mine set to mouse four because my mouse has more than two buttons. And uh, yeah, so then you can you can just get real crazy. You know, I got my inertia dampeners off. I'm gonna fling myself all the way over here and just say goodbye to everything on the map. Not boosting, not doing anything. But it's like, okay, well maybe I, I should probably, maybe I should come back. Okay, thanks, thanks for that out of bounds. Because <laughs> I went a little too far. Uh, but you can uh, use this to great effect with the fusion hook, especially. So like, for example, if I'm going over here, I can then fusion hook that, pull myself over even faster. Inertia dampeners are still off. I'm not even boosting. I'm regenerating my boost effectively. And I'm moving myself around to reposition against enemies. So if you time it correctly, you can do some pretty cheeky things with toggling inertia dampeners, using fusion hook or teleport, um, or even energized boost to gain some insane velocity, and at the same time, recharge your thrusters. It's a little bit higher skill, but we're okay with that. We're not gonna remove that, that's not a bug. That is absolutely a feature. If that's the way you wanna play and have fun, do it intentionally designed that way i should have really dodged those but oh well you can pull some of these drones off of him all right cool it's, it's bad positioning on my part oh well this guy's uh, not gonna give us too much trouble because this uh, this weapon we have actually does some pretty crazy damage. Pretty sure we can one shot. Yeah, right there. Just the rest of his health. And also, strikers are mean in close combat, which is their it's literally their trait. It's called close combat, which gives us a five percent increased damage for each enemy within 500 meters. 
And so when they are launching drones, that's just to our benefit. Pretty, pretty nasty. So otherwise, we're gonna fling around this asteroid. Look at this. Our inertia dampeners are off, and we're just gonna get pulled back around. I didn't even boost. And uh, probably gonna take some damage here. Oh gosh. Nope, we're gonna boost up. <laughs> But yeah, it's fun. Yeah, some other people pointing out didn't know that uh, the UI elements to indicate dampeners are on. Is there one in the cockpit mode? Um, I don't actually think it's on in cockpit mode yet. I know that we were... Um... Oh, actually it is. In the upper left, you see that yellow indicator. Oh, kapow. We got good shield, so I'm not too worried. But yeah, you can see in the upper left, we are planning on incorporating it down here on the actual HUD. On the, on the cockpit. It's on the HUD, it's not in the cockpit. We're planning on putting it in the cockpit. Um, we've actually had a couple ideas about it. One was like, oh, we could add like a little light, you know, that shows your inertia dampeners are off, for example. Uh, so we'll see what we do with that, inevitably. But yeah. Yeah, I hope that you do play around with uh, toggling inertia dampeners, Patrick, because it is a lot of fun. It's Again, like it's one of those things where if you haven't practiced a lot at it, it kind of feels bad because you run into everything. And frankly speaking, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff to run into in, in Everspace too. Like we're not doing a very realistic portrayal of space, right? It's not just a big old empty mess of nothingness. It's, there's like a lot of, there, each of these locations is handcrafted, like each asteroid I mean, yeah, of course, like the little asteroids we're reusing over and over because we're not going to generate thousands upon thousands of unique asteroids. But like the larger asteroids themselves, these are handcrafted with intentional level design philosophies implemented into that to reward you based on your experimentation and your exploration. So through that, your inertia dampeners can prove to be uh, problematic if you just keep colliding with stuff, or insanely fun when you can pull off some sick maneuvers between a lot of different things you could bump into. So it goes, it goes both ways, but it, it takes some practice. It is a higher, higher level skill element to manage. For sure. For sure. Just wanted to throw him into the ground because I'm a jerk. I didn't even kill him though. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna try and disable and then throw him again. That should probably do it. Yeah, there we go. See? Oh my gosh, delightful. And of course we can just push him around too. It's like, okay, you're gonna bonk over there. Oh goodness, I didn't want to bonk too, but that's fine. We'll take it. We'll just push him around, then we'll throw him. <laughs> See you later. We don't even have to fire our weapons here. It's just like, okay, we'll just, we'll just, uh, whoops. Oh, you know what? I don't think madcaps can actually be selected by the fusion hook. Yet. <clears throat> so we'll have to actually deal with this guy, unfortunately. How, how dare us? How dare us have to actually deal? So we'll just lock him in place. Take him out from there. Beautiful. I just get a little slingshot out. Excellent. Excellent. Sudden maneuvers against snipers, pretty, uh, yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, why are we not, why are we not hitting him? There we go, that's what I wanted. And of course I miss. Oh, we don't even have to hit him again, he got corroded. That is a modifier on the weapon itself. Which, I should point out. Did you know? Did you know that when you're firing a weapon like the high velocity executioner, that 2% chance to deal corrosion damage with each hit for three seconds is applicable to every projectile you launch? Not just one shot, each of those mini little shots. So this, is an ideal weapon mwah, for having a percent chance to do some sort of effect. 
because you have a lot of chances in one single burst. Something to keep in mind. Something to keep in mind. Yeah, also Ravagers can't, yep. Yeah, we are, we've, we've had some internal conversations about what devices should affect which ships. And in general, just to, just to like cool everybody down, we want you to be able to mess with as many enemies as possible, right? Just, that's the bottom line. We also need to make sure that we approach this level-headedly as we build through these new levels and new enemy types and also new devices that can be complemented. We wanna step forward instead of go too far and then take away, right? Because we could have made it to where you could just use the devices on any ship. And then later we set, we decide, well, this doesn't work or we need to have special effect on that enemy so that you can't do this or some other thing. It's gonna be a feels bad man moment, right? Yoinking something away from player, it's not, it, it doesn't, uh-uh. So we're restricting for now and we are looking at what that looks like as we move forward and we'll open up those doors and avenues as necessary. And I hope you guys understand that process and are patient with us as we navigate that with all of the devices present and future devices uh, as we continue developing. So yeah, oh, we got a Zarkov signal decoder. I missed that completely. Let's activate it. That'll be fun to screw around in. And a quick check on the questions to make sure we're not missing any of your important voices. It's the entire point of the freaking stream. And she's on pretty normal if you've got anything from Steam, because we're watching you guys too. Hit, hit me up there, and I can uh, absolutely answer those curiosities as well. So let's see, I'm checking out YouTube right now. Would it be possible to see the current multiplayer on close combat? Like whether there is more than one close range enemy giving you a damage boost. It is actually present. Um, so <clears throat> the conditions here give you more detail on what shows up in the screen. So at the very, very top, if you see that, that green indicator, it says it shows a two, now it says a three. I've got three enemies at close combat range. So we're effectively at 15%. If I zip over here, you'll start seeing that number go down and then it's empty. That's what that indicator is. So if you start seeing stuff pop up, up like that, it says close combat at first and then it just goes away and just keeps the indicator. See you later. And if you're ever curious what that means, then you can go to your current conditions. And these are still being worked on. There's gonna be more information provided here. Um, but you can see, like, it'll show you how many stacks there are and give you a brief description um, as to what that is, what it's doing uh, for all of the various conditions in the game. All of them. And boy, are there a lot of conditions. Oh, boy. So, yeah. All right, let's see if we can sling this guy to an asteroid. What I'm going to try and do is, yeah, there we go disabled him yeah that feels good so what i'm doing there is as i'm fusion hooking him towards me once he gets close enough for emp range i emp him which then puts him into that ragdoll state so then he continues past me in a ragdoll state and collides with an obstacle going way faster than he should gone just pop eliminated so these are these are just a couple ways to mess around with fusion hook. I'm I'm loving this so much. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm probably gonna be doing fusion hook shenanigans like this entire stream. I just really like this. <laughs> when you find that thing in a game, you're like, this is mine. I shall I shall make this all that it can possibly be. You know, you just embrace it and you just go for it. Right now, my love is the fusion hook. And I am just I'm just eating this up. So let's see. Thrusters feel kind of weak without dampeners for some reason. It feels like you decelerate faster with them on. Uh, interesting, interesting observation. That's gonna come down to a ton of different factors, Salt Can, like what ship class are you using? What is your type of thruster that you're using and your speed percent increase? What's your handling look like? Uh, what's the actual speed of the ship itself? 
Uh, what Do you have any benefit from your cargo unit to enhance your handling or your speed or both? Um, th the list keeps going on and on and on. So it might feel sluggish, especially if you're using a heavy ship and your items are crap in regards to your ship speed. There's, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different factors here. We don't have a factor to uh, multiply our ship speed on these particular items. So what you're seeing is a, is a fairly base level interpretation of the striker and its movement speeds. But we could get pretty crazy with this if we wanted to. We could get pretty crazy with this. Uh, the one thing about the striker in comparison to other ships though, is that the striker inherently gets an expertise bonus right here to its boost speed, which you can see right above me. So anything that adds expertise like my cargo unit and my tuned energy core inherently makes my boost speed faster for the striker in particular because it uses that expertise. So hopefully I gave you way too much information to process. <laughs> but uh, there's, and of course, there's still a lot more tweaking and modifying on how all of that comes together anyway. Uh, but we are still looking at more playful modifiers to help you navigate in the ways that you want. Have we added modular customization? That will be later. That will be later, especially once we get in uh most of those modular components if not all of them and we still have two more ship classes to bring to the table and all of the ships have at least at least two more wings in development at this time every single ship even the current ships that you see me flying around they still have like two more wings so much there's still a lot more to go and we didn't even crack open ship bodies ship engines and potentially cockpits we're still looking at doing cockpits there's some interesting conversations going on there gonna answer a couple more questions then we're gonna fling some more things around for funsies uh thank you for the questions though guys i'm, I'm really happy to assist in this regard and talk with you all that is what the streams are for so thank you for making this process of development so much more easy for you and also for us transparency is such a delight isn't it oh my gosh how wonderful is it uh so let's see that's why scattergun types are so good the numbers lie when it doesn't account for extra projectiles sort of spoot knight so like it's great for those additive effects right but you still have to charge up to get the most use out of it as opposed to another weapon which is constantly getting the chance if it's firing fast enough so it, it just depends but i personally love the percent chance on a scattergun because it's like one and done as opposed to i'm gonna see if i get lucky you know what i mean so and that's probably what you're speaking towards so I probably just agreed with you, but whatever, okay? I just... <laughs> when do you think a new update is coming out? Uh, September, I think? It's either September or October, actually. Let me, let me just look at my super secret details that are actually public knowledge. Uh, October, it's October. I need to correct myself. I said September, that was incorrect. It is October. We're looking at the end of October for the fall release. That's the Kait Nebula. I'll just read through this. It's going to be a new system the Kait Nebula, the new light class player ship, the new heavy class player ship, so you'll have nine distinct classes to choose from, new enemy types, new creatures, new natural phenomenon, new main and side missions, new activities, mini missions and challenges, a new companion, fast travel will be introduced with this update, and also another increase to player level cap. You guys really care about that? That's great, don't get me wrong. Um, so, yeah, we're also doing that. So lots of things, lots of happy fun times. That is what's to be expected in the end of October. It's planned for end of October. Much like many of our updates, they tend to get moved around by a couple of days. Um, so if, our, if I'm being like as transparent as possible, it's likely that we'll have like a um, experimental branch open up in October and then maybe see the full package delivered in, uh, what's the month that comes after October, November, right? Is that right? 
months. Uh, did I go to school? I think I did. Yes, perfect. That's, there's a possibility there. I just wanna make sure the expectations are aligned, okay? That's the main, th that's the main reason why I'm saying that. Planned for October release. Cool. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else we got before we dive back in? Oh yeah, Everspace 1 and 2 are on sale via GOG. So if you like, uh, if you use GOG, if you utilize GOG, you love that stuff, uh, you can dive over there and there's some solid deals going on. That is definitely something to note. Everspace 2 is 20% off over there. Um, do understand though, that GOG does not have an opportunity for experimental builds. This is just an unfortunate sort of happenstance. Steam has the opportunity. So when we go into an experimental build, Steam users will have access to that. GOG, you will have to wait for the official update to drop. So don't get sidelined by that. At the same time, 20% off is not too bad. If you want to dive in now, start experimenting with stuff and provide feedback. Cool. Yeah, and Deshra, uh, we've actually seen that question. I uh, jumped in over to Twitch really quick. But the question about animated parts on ships, we've had the conversation a couple times and we were curious about it ourselves. There is a strong likelihood that it will not happen. It's a ton of added work because we're doing the modular approach. Um, so we are, we're gonna have to nip that in the bud. I'm sorry to disappoint you in that field. But we're hoping to make up for it just from the sheer amount of playable ship uh, modules that can bring together a delightful approach to, to your flying fashion needs. Can this ship type drop mines? All ships can actually drop mines. All ships can drop mines, and by drop I mean throw. But we are looking at the ability to drop similar to that of Everspace 1. I'll just point that out. We'll see what happens in the future. Dropping mines and dragging uh, them into them with this ability sounds super appealing to me. Oh, like throwing mines with the fusion hook? That's an interesting thought. That's an interesting thought indeed. Uh, so let's see if there's anything else to point out. So... Flory2931 says, wait, nine ship types with four wing types per ship type. So 36 ship models. Yeah, if you don't include the different bodies and engines and cockpits. Yeah. <laughs> it starts getting rather multiplicative. Desiree, yeah, no, no problems, no problems. I, I just wanted to make sure, because I know sometimes like it's really important to them to like have as many fancy things as possible. I'm just being transparent with you, that's all. I'm glad you're not disappointed. Okay, so I know that I'm like really, I'm going heavy into the questions right now. I wanna I wanna get back into Fusion Hook land a little bit, okay? So YouTube, I know you're asking some some good questions there. Uh, Seth in particular, uh, ET, uh, or rather, like I'm just kind of like reading through a lot of conversation there. It's beautiful, I love it. I'm gonna play some more and then I'll get into more uh, questions, all right? Because I'm sure that we don't want to just look at an inventory screen for two hours. <laughs> I don't think that's a very fun stream. Oh my gosh, where are we? Where are we going? Where are all the enemies? Oh yes, a proto scout. Okay, so what? We're gonna try and fling him into this asteroid over here. Oh, he's awfully close to it. That was too far. Why did I do that? Well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do this instead. We're gonna push him away first, and then we're gonna fling him behind us. Whoop! How oh, we we completely whiffed. I was bad. So we'll push this guy into the asteroid. Bonk. Then we'll push him again. Then we're going to. Uh, then we're gonna disable him and fling him into the asteroid behind us. We didn't get enough speed. I'm a little disappointed, but with myself, we'll just finish him off like that. Take it. 
take out this guy. Okay. Missiles are being a little problematic. Oh man, I just, I love, I love using physics to be my leading points of damage. It just makes me happy. So get rid of this missile turret. Get rid of, oh wow, that was a terrible shot. Get rid of this missile silo. Thank you. Beautiful. Oh, we got a protector sphere socket. Okay, good. This is one that we don't actually uh, look at too much on stream. Also, we're gonna plop that in like so. Let's not get uh, radiated. So a pre protector sphere socket. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can be cheeky here. Don't know. Nope. I'm gonna get radiated. That's fine. Oh, it that's not a generator. That's a socket. Goodness gravy. Well, I just got some radiation, no big deal. It's fine. That just means our health is going to chip away a little bit. Speaking of health and chipping away, uh, let me see if I can show this. Um, I need to try and do a thing. Okay, so you can kind of see it. <clears throat> so what radiation does if anyone's wondering, it decreases your hole. Your max hole comes down. So you can actually see, if you, if you zoom in here, I wish I had a zoom button suddenly. That's the next macro command I need to create. Will, help me out. Um, basically, right here, there's, there's pips that indicate your hole and its depleted stature because of the radiation. So my hole is depleted. Like my maximum hole has been reduced based on being radiated. You do not want radiation in this game. It is bad. It is bad. Radiation can be cured. Um, in a number of ways. And of course I'm blanking on the main ones at the moment. But it's mostly surrounding the ideas of repairing your ship but if you use like uh, if you use any type of nanobot does not work I know this because I just tried it no I wanted to I wanted to pull you hang on a second come here there we go you're gonna go fast oh see you later beautiful Demolisher, okay. We're not gonna be able to play around with this guy too much. Uh, fusion hook doesn't work on the demolisher, but we can stun him at least. Bonk. Oh, he has shields. Can't get through the shields. This particular scatter gun does a ton of damage, but if your opponent has any shields whatsoever, it doesn't go through. It doesn't go through at all. That's because it deals zero energy damage. Energy damage is required to be used against shields. Kinetic damage is completely absorbed by shields. And vice versa with armor. Excellent. All right. Take out some of these guys. Beautiful. Come over here. See you later. Come back here. Excellent. It's 
bring that armor drone over here. Oh, I did not want the detonator drone. Excuse me. I wanted this one. <laughs> so we had a suggestion about <clears throat> which one the kunai would target whenever you use the fusion hook. And I think that's a pretty sound example of why it could be important. You probably want to bring a defense drone over instead of, you know, a drone that will explode in your face. Uh, so we have heard that request. Um, we think it's a good one. We'll see if that's a possibility or not. Based on how the devices operate, it uh, might be a tricky one to do, but we'll see. We'll see if we can implement that. All right, so we pounded out a couple more enemies. Let's see what questions have generated since then. Will we have an enemy list with stats and lore in the codex? Uh, yes. Yes, I said incredibly confidently. Um, so we have a lot of elements here that are going to help uh, you understand uh, various like factions and corporations in particular. Uh, the guides and tutorials bit, I think, is going to have a little bit of codex to that. But you're going to see codex in regards to systems here, the story so far, resources, character. Like, you're going to see a lot of that uh, emblazoned within the data tab itself. Um, we had a conversation, uh, several conversations, about a dedicated codex tab. And we'd rather mix it in all of these components under a codex menu, which you see right here, as opposed to just a single codex itself. Uh, it's a little bit uh, less interesting like that. We're going to spice things up, give you all the information you need uh, with general gameplay knowledge and understanding in that mix as well, instead of it just being... We did this because we thought it was cute. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's good stuff. Do we already have an X-Wing ship? Um, we have a ship that uses wings in an X shape. Twitch is much quieter than usual. It's fine. We got a lot of watchers over there. It's totally great. All right, so let's see what YouTube was asking because again, we got we got a lot of action on YouTube. You guys are great. So let me scroll up a bit. Um, is there any combat with a solo enemy that is really strong? Uh, yes, there are bosses that we are incorporating in the game. Sub bosses uh, bound to the story, but then we also have independent bosses. Uh, sub bosses. Let me show you one. Shoot, let me just let me just go to one. Because we activated a Zarkov uh, beacon, uh, high risk location, where you have to destroy all the enemies in the area and then you fight a little boss. We'll do that. All of the high risk areas at the moment are fairly similar, simply because we haven't generated new enemy types yet. But we'll do this so you can kind of see that. Uh, and then let's see what else. Got a bunch of items that increase your base speed and my Vanguard overcharges the shield just when I press W. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We made a lot of adjustments to the overcharge shield for the Vanguard because should feel good to gain a benefit while you are exploiting your speed in some way, right? So while you're just cruising forward, you know, debatably shouldn't be overcharging. I know it's not much though, because I've done that as well. Uh, but like, especially if you have your inertia dampeners turned off, why not? That should grant you, you're traveling over the speed based on the wording we've incorporated into the game. Uh, it feels fine for now. Um, there may be tweaks and modifications to that, but uh, that also goes into that sort of established mindset of we don't want to take away. We do like what it's doing for the player. It's fun. 
So we'll see where that goes. And if we do have to make a change, we'll be transparent with you, like we always are. So you know what's coming up and uh, why we're doing those changes in particular. Uh, so let's see. Why do we have seat cockpits and not saddle cockpits, like straddling a sports bike with two tw twin sticks and all the buttons down there with a more bubble style wraparound canopy? Uh, well, so a couple of things. There's different cockpits for the different uh, sizes of the ships. Um, but also it's, I mean, why do we have spaceships that look like jets? Why do we have sound in space? Why do we have, I mean, I, I could go on, right? Like, it's just a decision that we looked at and said, this looks cool. Let's keep it. And we're just moving forward with that. Does it make 100% realistic sense? Eh, no, probably not. But so long as it makes sense enough, and we like the way that it's conveyed to the player and how it's bringing you into the mix, yeah, we're going to use it. Now, if it's not, like if immersion's getting broken by something like that that we're creating, then uh, two things. One, we're listening to player feedback as to why that immersion's getting broken. And two, we'll freaking change it. Like that's, <laughs> that's how it works. That's how, especially how early access works. Um, so no worries, no worries whatsoever, but in short, we think it looks cool. That's, that's kind of the answer. <laughs> that's kind of the answer. <laughs> and then a couple more questions from me. Uh, would be, we could, if you guys were making a trade ship version of airspace in the background, da, 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 da. we have enemy lists with stats and the, oh, we, we covered that one. Animated prints on player ships. No, that's not going to happen. Uh, I'm just going to have to shoot that down right now. Um, the graphics on the ship are static. Um, and there may or may not be the inclusion of more. The reduction of some. There's still a lot that could happen in that field. I don't think it's going to do anything crazy. So I wouldn't expect much. It's not like we're going to add 5,000 unique graphics. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be anything like that. Um, but they will not be animated. You will be able to change their colors, of course. Uh, let's see. I see you guys having a little conversation about that stuff. Excellent. Fusion hook with inertia's off. Oh, yeah, I've, I've been doing that occasionally on the stream. Yep. Um... Yeah, it's a lot of fun, isn't it, Safi? I think I'm pronouncing your name correctly. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am not good at pronouncing things, I have learned. <laughs> uh, moving from shield DPS to whole DPS in Everspace 1 is kind of misleading. I thought you can only deal energy damage to shields, which is true, and only connect to whole when you apparently can do both. Yeah, no, Everspace 1 to Everspace 2, um, they look... They seem similar but mechanically they are different they are different armor in everspace one was a percentile reduction of damage in other words it's resistance it's resistance so we changed that entirely to where armor is one type of defense you have and resistance is a reduction of your defenses in addition to that of course in everspace one you have you know shield dps and whole dps you didn't actually have energy damage and kinetic damage. It was shield DPS, the damage you straight do to shields, and you had whole DPS, the damage you straight do to, to whole, and that was it. So by distinguishing these factors a bit more and saying, well, it's now energy and kinetic, that means we can play around with a lot more modifiers on how you're approaching your situations, right? Because now your shields, their energy-based utility, right? They're going to block all kinetic damage. Your armor is kinetic-based utility. It's going to block all energy-based damage. And your hull is exposed to any type of damage at all. So it's going to receive full damage from both energy and kinetic sources, right? And then when you start pairing reduction, uh, or excuse me, resistance into that mixture, we start getting some very interesting, unique situations where... Uh, if you're being careful and precise with the stats and your equipment, uh, you can do some pretty wonky, fun things. 
Uh, it's not all in place yet in the game. Like, there, we're still working on more items, more modifiers, stuff like that. Um, but there's an intentionality behind that choice and that distinction. Makes it much more deep. Much more deep. I don't know how I play this game with inertia dampeners on. Well, um, two things. One, because that's the intended way to play. Since this is not a space sim, we don't want you drifting around as in a realistic environment. We need you to be in full control of your player. Think of it like this. What if you were playing Halo? What if you were playing Destiny, where if you moved in one direction, your character just kept walking? Would that feel right? If the answer is no, we agree. That is the intended design philosophy around Everspace 2, and frankly, Everspace as well. Having your initial dampeners off in Everspace 1 was even a hindrance to you. It made things far more challenging, and that's because of the way that we're approaching the game space, the obstacles, the types of enemies, and how you are navigating that. Um, if you guys recall Descent, that's another one that you could uh, soak up where you have six degrees of freedom, but when you move, you stop after you move in that direction, so you move like on a dime. Again, intended design here so that you're in full control of your first person shooting, much like in a Halo or a Destiny or pick a random first person shooter uh, at all uh, style of movement. That's why it's done like that. That is why we have done it like that. And then on top of that, we know that it's a space game and people are like, I want my inertia dampeners to be turned off. So we gave it to you. Best of both worlds. <laughs> what a delight. If you don't like the way it works, turn them off. Mm. Excellent. <laughs> Do any news about release date exist? Yes. So we are looking, we're still looking at 2022 for a release date. Um, there has been a lot of discussions about, you know, how everything's being delivered, all that type of stuff. If we have any new updates about release dates and schedules and anything like that. You know, we were talking about October being the next update drop. If we ever have anything like that that changes, uh, hope we always hope that it doesn't because obviously we want to deliver this as soon as possible to you guys. We also need to make sure we do the game justice. We need to make sure we're implementing your feedback accordingly, right? So if anything does happen to change through that process, we'll tell you. We'll tell you as soon as we possibly can in order to fix our schedules to help you guys have that understanding. And then we can talk about why we did what we did in these live streams. And uh, you can either hate us for it or be thankful that we're at least communicating, right? So, you know, it's always it's always a toss up, but we like our design philosophy is we have to make a great game first. Um, I mean, that's, that's the way it is. We did see a couple of delays in Outer Space 1. We have seen a couple of delays with Outer Space 2. I'm not saying that we're gonna delay anything else, but there is that possibility. And I just want to make sure the expectation is there so we don't, uh, that we're not misaligned at all. Um, deadlines are always in the plans, right? They're always plans. So sometimes plans get changed around and it sucks, but we are doing our best to deliver everything on schedule so that we can all be happy campers. I love the fact that I didn't have to deal with that sniper drone at all. Just freaking get over here, get wrecked. Like, man, that felt, that was nice. That felt really good. Oh, a, a drone? Okay, sweet. Nice shot, me. <clears throat> Excellent. All right, so here we go. Let's see if we can, uh... ah, we missed. Come here while I'm floating away from the rest of your buddies. Perfect. Also, I want to get this demolisher out of the way. I don't, I don't want him to cause me any grief. Man, there are a lot of explosive drones nearby. And there's no obstacles I can fling to. Oh my goodness. I don't like that. I wanted more obstacles. Look at this guy getting pulled in a very wonky capacity. See you later. I want these enemies to come over to some of these obstacles. Man, a very clear space here. Wasn't expecting that. Oh, here we go. We can use this to whip around a little bit. 
very drone heavy force here though. My goodness. We'll see if we can slow some of these guys down. Oh yeah, that's that's nice. We'll just Oh thanks, Alec! Yeah, that was that was real nice, just stopping all those drones immediately. Ah, uh, wrong one. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, please clip that and send it to me. I need to share that with my mom. Mom, look what I did today at work. Oh, I want you to be proud of me. Wow. I like the fusion hook. I hope you guys are realizing how much fun this really, it just like, oh goodness gracious. I just, I just love me some fusion hook. I don't even care that he rammed into me. It's like, goodness gravy. <laughs> so delightful. Oh, gosh. There we go. Ah. Uh, can go over here. Perfect. Wonderful. Eh, you went too far away. I need you to... Oh. All right, see you later. Cool. I know there's more questions being generated. I'm confident of it. Uh, let me tidy up this combat. Man, I'm having so much fun. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, it never gets old. <laughs> Just easily takes one member of their team out of the combat. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's focus these guys down. Delightful. Alex's doing some pretty good work over here. Good job, buddy. Whoop. That, that operated in the prop, improper way, uh, but we'll see you later. See you later. A couple more, and then um, with that question that I had answered earlier about like bosses and stuff, uh, we should see one generate once we clear out the rest of this area. We're getting pretty close. Okay, I'm gonna. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you guys also that um, if you think that the fusion hook is fun now, I, I'm just gonna mention that we have more plans of device interactions in the future. That's as far as I can say that without getting in trouble. That's all, that's, that's and let me tell you what, I'm excited. <laughs> I am so excited. Oh my goodness. All right. <clears throat> so let's take this guy out just super fast. So we're going to use a destabilizer missile on him here. And just punch some serious damage into him. Open up. Oh my gosh. Yeah, look at that. So this is an elite outlaw destroyer, which we are absolutely just savaging for a number of reasons. But uh, we have a we have a pretty well-oiled machine here. Ooh, ship colors? Ooh. I love customization. You guys know that. Let's, let's bring it all in. Aquarius, good, good. That's nice. What else we got? Rosso Corsa, excellent. I am delighted. Option sound, sound effects <laughs> equals zero. 
Nice. Disable sound in space. Game's not realistic. Okay, check this out. Perfectly clear representation of a space game. Hyper realism. Wait a second. Inertia dampener's off. Hyper realism mode, guys. Hyper realism mode. Full immersion experience right now. Is that not the craziest thing you've ever seen? I don't know if you can get closer to a realistic. <laughs> Who plays like this? <laughs> Uh, now, now, joking aside, we have heard some cool ideas about having like, um, like, uh, uh what's it called? The, um, not augmented, but, uh, uh, like a virtual sound modifier, basically, right? Where there's not sound, but then you have like an onboard computer that's generating what it would sound like so that it feels right. Like, I think that's cool. I think that idea is cool. Um, but obviously, you know, we're... We're a first person looter shooter first and foremost. We want you to feel good when you're blasting things. And sound design is so integral to that process. Also music, also disc music. <clears throat> okay. So let's see. Can we get a toggle for straightening the ship rather than going to gameplay options all the time? Uh, it should be, it should actually just be an option. Like it should level out the ship if you want that. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't, is it under input? Wait, do we not have auto leveling yet? I thought we had auto leveling. Maybe I'm a doofus. Um, Automatic rolling. Okay, yeah. So it's sorry. This one, this is actually under the input. Mouse and keyboard flight behavior. So you can change. You to try. I'm trying to get. <laughs> try. Here, hang on. Let me. I'm trying to get out of the way. Oh, that was really loud. Sorry. But right here, you can make automatic rolling, and then you also have your boost behavior. You can have it be hold or toggle. We've heard that request as well. We just popped it in simple enough it only took us three weeks to incorporate that toggle button but yeah you can do that we also have crosshair behavior where it's floating or centered if you're if you would like that uh, so like centered with mouse movement uh, for example this is what that looks like so now our mouse is on the outside and you can see like which direction you're going in so if you prefer to play like this this could be to your benefit as well. But there's there's a lot of options that we haven't actually talked so much about that are available to you. Uh, it's, maybe we could add it in a tutorial or something. I don't know, but um, but I digress. Like we have a, we have some fun stuff to do there. Also, we have another we have a superior. We're gonna do another high risk because they're fun. They are fun. Uh, so let's see. Oh yeah, I'm not using my alt. I am so bad at using my alt on the live streams. Like, man, when I'm playing the solo, I use the alt freaking all the time. And when I'm doing live streams, I don't know why. I just completely neglect the dang thing. So let's use it. Oh, this is a good source to use it on too. It locked on to me. So check this out. All the enemies are dead and my ultimate has recharged. So some of you might be wondering like, what just happened? Well, it's still happening actually. You'll notice that both of these guys just got wrecked and we just have like two enemies left. So the quantum tether, I would call a more advanced ultimate as it requires some nuance to use. You have to have a right situation to occur, but like with where we were at in this situation, we had it. And of course we have a freaking sniper drone. Get over here, please. Thank you. But the quantum tether 
whenever you target an opponent, it tethers all nearby enemies to it. A successful outcome to this engagement. And based on the damage that you do to the centralized target, it dishes out that damage to everything that it's tethered to. Which is why a large target being focused there and then blasting away at it destroys literally everything else. It's a nice ultimate. Time to delete the map. Yeah, basically, it's a, it can be a delete button, but again, you have to use it in the right situation. Um, there are still more adjustments being made to ultimates as well. Some of them are a little bit more powerful than they should be. Believe it or not, we boosted the strength of the quantum, quantum tether, but uh, I digress. I digress. We are still tweaking and making sure everything feels good, looks good, all that stuff. All that stuff. And my goodness, we have so much stuff. I'm going to keep my precision and utility, actually. Um, shield breaker missiles are nice, but I'm going to keep what I have. Gross cannon could be fun to show on stream, but I'm going to be stubborn and remove it anyway. We're going to reorganize our stuff. We got some space. And then we're just going to get rid of it. Cool. Well Thanks, Hive. All right, so now we have another uh, boss here, once again. So we're gonna use this to chip away his armor, which is incredibly in inefficient to do, but I want to charge up my other weapons. So now he's opening up the door. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give him a ton of damage. Boom, 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 he is down. What we did is we hit a weak point on the ship and we also used a destabilizer missile to effectively just wipe him. So that's always fun. Speaking of wipe, let's send this drone for a wild ride. See you later. All right, what else did I miss? What type of boat does Elec fly? Um, so it's not, like we have a name for it. Um, I think that if you were looking at comparison points of ships from Everspace One, we'll use that as an example, it closely resembles the Marauder, uh, which is not a ship in Everspace Two at this time. Could it come back? Maybe. But that's the classification Alex ship has. Um, but that's that's about it. But it's true to form because in Everspace 1, he flew a Marauder. We wanted to keep that. It is technically custom made, you're right. It is technically custom made. Do enemies avoid the board of their map? Yes, we have... We've had to modify this element annoyingly multiple times. Um, so they do, um, there's still more to tweak on it. Um, in fact, uh, let me pull up the patch notes here because I know that we've been working on this where, um, yeah, so we increase the distance um, of which, when, like when the boundary warning is shown to the ship before it turns around, we increase that distance so that you're more aware of like how close you are to it. And furthermore, we are tweaking the response that the AI has towards that distance so that when you're getting close to it, the enemies don't keep going in that direction. It's almost like an invisible wall for them. I say that loosely because they can still go through it, but they're intentionally turning around to come back. Like a sniper drone's not gonna keep backing up and then just go out into open space and not allow you to reach it, okay? So it's kind of like a, a pseudo wall, if you will. Oh yeah, multi-selecting uh, the objects in the inventory. Yeah, this is this is something that isn't uh, conveyed yet. But yeah, if you hold the control button, you can select multiples. And you can, um, 
you can scrap things. Also, if I'm not mistaken, we increased that speed of dismantling, and we also increased the speed of destroying. No, that we haven't. But we're going to. Spoilers! We are, we're going to adjust those values. Tilo's been uh, on it. He's been a champion. And, uh, yeah. We want things to go faster, and we notice that you do too. Because this takes too long. It took two and a half whole seconds of my life away. How dare these developers make you take an extra couple seconds? But with all sincerity, like, we recognize that it sucks. So we're adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's change we just got that blaster let's change our thermal gun out for this equalizer I do like the equalizer it can be fun and uh, let's fly around somewhere else let's go over actually let's do the parasite mission um, this is spoiler territory there's a lot to it actually and there's a lot more later, but we did leave off on that last time and I, I kind of feel like I owe it to you, but we're gonna keep using Fusion Hook for more shenanigans because I'm just having fun. I can't believe I've watched you for years and you don't invert the Y axis. You think you know someone, oh my gosh. People who invert the y-axis are not real people. Oh my gosh! Whoa! I'm obviously kidding, but am I? <laughs> Goodness gravy. Man, for Hotas though, for Hotas, uh, inversion is like absolutely necessary. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. But I'm a mouse and keyboard scrub. Uh, and by scrub, I mean a uh, PC master race. So you have to keep that in mind. I don't like inverting. I like I like moving in the direction that I want to move. That's just how it is. How to install the entire flight sim computer? <laughs> Man, I just noticed that our wish list dropped by 60%. That's, that's strange. <laughs> I'm obviously, I'm kidding. Goodness gravy. No, we've, we've, received a lot of feedback pertaining to um, how that functionality needs to occur. And it's a no brainer to incorporate the ability to invert. It's a no brainer. Of course, of course we're gonna provide that. Robo Joe says with mouse never invert, with controller joystick always invert. I feel the same. That being said, I do know that there are individuals out there who don't like that. I have seen my dad use his mouse inverted in how he... It bothers me, but that's what he's used to. And you know what? If that's what he's used to and that's how he likes to experience his game, more power to him. We got the option there to do it. It's totally fine. He's wrong. <laughs> no, but sincerely, like, play the way you want to. Just know that, like, we're starting to ebb into that side of the conversation was like well i want to be able to use uh you know i want to hook up my guitar hero controller why do, why don't you guys have input methodology for that well technically you could do that setup but you know you're going to use third-party software we're not going to hardwire in presets for guitar hero okay like just make sure everyone's abundantly clear if you want to like wire a potato to give like your bananas energy for pushing each individual button great that's awesome, but we're not going to provide that as like a toggle. <laughs> so just like, just like point that out, okay? Just, just covering all the bases here. <laughs> you invert joystick controller because it's easier than reworking muscle memory every game you play. Precisely. Exactly. Wonderful. I, just that's that's solid that's solid uh music is often overpowering the voice lines would be good to lower the music volume during conversations oh my apologies uh, i'll keep that in mind rudolph thank you for pointing that out i appreciate you excellent 
Uh, any plans to introduce a confirmation box when selling items to vendors? Is there is there not a confirmation box? Oh no, it's if you have multiples. If you have multiples. Uh, there's kind of one, but you have to be selling more than one thing. Otherwise, um, if you sell something that you didn't want to sell, you can buy it back. There's a buyback tab at a vendor and you get it for the same price that you sold it. So you do, there's no loss. I don't think we're gonna add a confirmation box. Do you have enough to boost that equalizer's rarity? Uh, oh, I might actually. Let's uh, let's find out. Let's go into modify, and uh, yeah, we do. We can modify this once. Why not? Cannot be damaged. Look, it's not it's not a bad trait. I'm just saying I wanted anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to take a little spoilery trip down the pathway of the Parasite mission. Feast your eyes on some lore in the Everspace universe. If you don't want to be spoiled and experience this stuff for yourself, uh, this might be a section of the stream where you just kindly, you know, turn around and, uh, and we'll go from there. Just inform you that this is not any crash wreck, but the CEV North Pole. I knew it. Disguised as a colonial exploration vessel, it was used during the war to move experimental weaponry through the belt grades. Experimental weaponry, huh? Mm -hmm. Even in its current state, it appears to be protected by some kind of disruptive signal, and a very unusual one at that. Mm. Unusual in what sense? It is like nothing I have ever encountered. And oh, damn it, Hive, pull yourself together. Oops. Speaking. The frequent jamming my require a tone. It's jamming my AI too. Do you know how to deactivate it? I am. I need to get closer if I want to make any sense out of him. All right. So mission's called Parasite. Triggered over here in Zarkov, and there's a number of things going wrong with this ship that you can weave in and out of. Like the whole thing's busted up. There's radiation. We need to get to this distress signal. Signal. See lots of floating dead ships nearby. There you are. Please, I need someone to pull me out. The noise is killing me. What noise? Uh, it is splitting my skull. Okay, hold on. I got you. So we're gonna take this ship, and we're gonna take him to the maintenance hey. dock. Drop me off at the bow. Sure. The ship is a wreck. The repairing units are supposed to be autonomous, so there is a chance. Just get me away from the noise. I can barely think straight. It's broadcasting from the stern of the vessel. I would steer clear if I were you. There you go. Oop. Is the signal still messing with you? No, it is gone. I think I will be fine now. Good, because this is all I can do for you. Good luck with patching yourself up. I'm out of here for now. Need to get my AI rebooted. I just need some peace. The signal is definitely protecting something. Maybe I should pay a visit to Fallon Pango. He might know how to protect Ty from that jammer. That's the hacker. So we're gonna go over to that fine gentleman to assist in what's going down with all of this. Now I also have to go to the missions tab So I think this is a good time to mention our socials. Hey, you know, there's a lot of different places that you can go uh, to do wonderful things. Uh, they're, they're fantastic, really. This is where you can follow us, all things. You got the Discord where we like to uh, see your beautiful screenshots and we like to make fun of you for asking really dumb questions. It's great. It's a wonderful time. Share your memes, uh, engage with us. It's pure, it's pure beneficial for both of us. 
every single one of the both of us. We've got Instagram where we highlight your screenshots themselves. We got Reddit where we have lots of different conversations explode and it's just delightful. We got Twitter and Twitch and YouTube. You guys are probably familiar with those sites where more information can be delivered. But if none of those things interest you whatsoever, of course, you can just continue being awesome uh, and hang out with us right where we're freaking at, right? Which is on these streams every Friday where we engage with you and make sure that you know uh, what's going on. It's uh, it's such a delight. Okay, now let's get back to the game, right? Got to get back to the normal game without anything changed. Everything is the same. About oh, hey, look, we arrived. Going. Thanks, Sol, you're back. A remarkably powerful jamming signal interfered with my systems. Next time, we're not going in unprepared. Fortunately, I might just know the right guy for this. The way you are phrasing this leads me to expect the worst. Now his dialogue actually triggered at the wrong time. Don't worry about that. I didn't use dev commands. All right, here we go. Ah, Adam, what a pleasant surprise. I know, right? Is it a surprise, I mean? You got me there. My radar has registered you quite a few times between the smuggling gate to Zarkov and here. What I do not yet know is to what do I owe this pleasure? I need something to better protect my AI from disruptive frequencies. You possess a hive, if I'm not mistaken. Which is interesting, because hive units are usually fairly robust. What kind of interference are we talking about? Don't know. We ran into it while sweeping a capital shipwreck in Zarkov. May I have a look at your output log? Hive, is it safe to show him our log? Of course not. However... I do not know why he asks permission when he downloaded the entirety of our log the moment we docked. Figures. I must say, these readings are quite intriguing. I love Luckily, this guy. I happen to have just what you need. Feel free to install this module. It is completely on the house. To celebrate our new friendship, I have removed all spyware and malware just for you. I can confirm this. After running an assortment of tests on the module, I cannot identify any malicious strings. There's gotta be a catch. The catch is that, should you ever return to the area in question, I would kindly ask you to gather more data for me. What was the name of the capital ship again? Uh, I don't know. Just some random wreck as usual. I see. Well, have fun with my module. I'm looking forward to your return. Excellent. So we're gonna go ahead and quick restock here. And uh uh yeah, we're gonna answer a couple questions I saw on Twitch. Uh I missed them, so thank you for your patience. We got Hokil007 who says, Will there be more options for the HUD, like opacity and colors? Um I know that for accessibility, we're looking at colors. In regards to opacity, I am pretty confident that we are not going to be approaching that territory. Um, but I also know that, let's see, I know that we've had a lot of discussions internally about the level of conveyance to players to ensure that you know exactly where things are at and what they do. And we are, we're, we're quite happy with where the game's currently at. Now, the added context, like mousing over a ship condition, like those elements aren't done yet. But, uh, and we haven't done um, color blindness settings, which is something that we plan to do as well. Um, but as far as like the like picking different elements of your HUD and like moving it around manually. No, like that's not, that's not coming. We're not doing anything like that. So it's kind of a partial answer for you, but colors, possibly opacity, no. And moving things around, no. Uh, so are the artifacts coming from Everspace One or the alien stuff? You're talking about the ancients. The ancients, uh, we have maybe seen in Everspace 2, albeit briefly, and there's lots of opportunities for where we could take the product or byproduct of their existence in this space to uh, do fun stuff with. Excellent! 
Excellent. All right, let's continue this mission. Will there be mod support? Oh my gosh. Mm. Mod support would be pretty freaking amazing. And everybody on the team, like every single person, every single person, I'm pretty sure every single person on the team also would love, would love to have mod support. It is not a priority right now. It is not a priority. It will come into place whenever we have all of the content that could be modded, um, which is gonna be far closer to the full release. So hyper low priority right now. Why didn't Pango recognize the signature of the capital ship immediately? He only made it sound like he didn't. Oh gosh dang it. I don't want no I don't want no hostiles. I missed! Oh goodness gracious. Let's see if we can uh no, he's not gonna be able to be dealt with any damage in that sense. Let me uh, use this coil gun. I like this coil gun. This is nice. But man, I love the scatter gun and the variations thereof. We go another mag oh come on i want to play around with physics you are ruining my jam all right you however you can you can go over there all right so how do we want to do this we want to pull you over there we go we missed every single asteroid nearby come on Come on! <laughs> All right. Nope, nope, nope. I don't want to pull the asteroid. I want to pull him. There he is. All right. Come over here. All right. Here we go. Excellent. Excellent. That works. Get wrecked. All right. Beautiful. All right, now let's head back to our target location. Bonked, yes. Absolutely. Changing the shield breaker max missile texture would be nice. It looks too similar to the normal rocket. I mean, yeah, it does look pretty similar. Um, in fairness, they're pretty similar missiles, like the Shield Breaker as, uh, and the uh, Armor Breaker. Uh, shield Breaker has blue on it. Armor Breaker has orange. I wish I had it here to compare. Versus the standard missile, which is just white. You don't think it's distinct enough? I mean, we like it. I'm not asking you, like... Oh yeah, we'll immediately change that for you because we're probably not, but I, I mean, maybe, maybe we could tweak it a little bit further. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, regardless, let's keep going. Armor breaker needs spikes. I feel like Armor breaking needs 
I, it needs to look like a hammer. <laughs> like, whenever I think about... If we're going into, like, gamer mentality, it's like, okay, what what beats, like, a soft armor, like a, a leather, right? Um, you'd have, like, something that slices. Something that slashes. Something that pierces. When you think of about, like, heavy armor, like bulky plates, you think of something that's a bludgeoning weapon, right? That's what I think. I think of like a, a big bludgeoning object. So instead of it just being like this single missile, it just needs to be like a block. <laughs> just fire blocks. That's all it is. <laughs> now, obviously there's different interpretations of what that could look like. Um, but again, we're, we're pretty happy with how those missiles look like. I'm about to approach the signal again. You ready? But, that uh, depends on the efficiency of the Bovis software. True. Let's hope for the best. But I, I do get it. I, I get that there could be more distinction there. I just, I don't know if it's something that we're worried I have about. Determined the origin of the signal. I marked it on your HUD. HUD. Scrap. No, 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 no. Jump drives are breaking down too. This is worse than last time. Uh oh. oh Freaking signal. I need to shoot the emitter down. Okay, so we can't get out of here now until we uh, finish this mission. So you may start seeing we've got a new title for these enemies which says corrupted. Oh, come on. I want I want you to come here. Dang it. He got stuck on the wall. I hit him so hard. This is a nice territory to like mess around with physics though. Like, like it's really nice. <laughs> Our fighter that's also corrupted. If you'll notice, when they go into uh, area effect elements, they also take that, so you guys are aware. So you could pull them around and do more wonky damage like that if you really wanted to. Beam laser? Okay. Oak our drone. We, we flung that guy pretty far. Yeah, we did. Let's bring him back. Ah, wrong weapon. There we go. Sayonara. What the hell? They were like zombie bots. Damn it. I can't get out without my jump drive. That guy I helped earlier better have the maintenance dock running again. Otherwise, I'm screwed. Okay. So now we have to head back to the maintenance dock. You're still here? Scrap, didn't get the maintenance unit to work. Ah, not so loud. Of course I did. I repaired it, and it repaired me. Oh, thanks, Soul. Because I could really use some patch and I module. There it is. You shouldn't linger here. Something has started turning wrecks into zombie bots around this place. I took care of most of them, but there still might be some around. I would prefer to stay a little longer. The silence is a blessing. Well, suit yourself. I'll be out of here the moment my AI reboots. May I ask who you are speaking with? And he's back. I'm talking to the pilot I helped earlier. He's still here. What pilot? The vessel you are addressing shows no vital signs. Whoever is in there has been long dead. What? Hey, man, who are you? Please, stop shouting. I recommend gaining as much distance as you can. Now. Physical entity. 
Possibly some kind of artificial intelligence or a viral network. While docking here, it has overtaken the station's defenses and nearby wrecks. Are you kidding me? If you won't allow me my tranquility, I will have to restore it by force. So after zombie ships, it's a zombie station. Great. Did I get them all? Yes, but the pilot, as you called it, managed to escape. Are you saying that a malicious virus taking over dead ships and stations is now freely roaming the Belta Grates? Ah! Indeed, thanks to you. The jamming signal we encountered earlier was likely put there to prevent the entity from ever leaving this place. Scrap. I dislike saying this, but I recommend returning to Fallon Pank. Viruses and malware are his field, after all. Cool. <laughs> Didn't think we were going to be fighting zombie spaceships, did ya? Spoiler alert, we are. Delightful. You done goofed? Yes. New jump gate sounds? Ah, uh, they were tweaked. So, yes. Yes, I believe so. Pango and Alec have been hanging out? Maybe. <laughs> oh my gosh, Excelsior, I just got to your comment about, about the armor breaker missile, missiles and you said, make it look like a bullet pill. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, goodness gravy. That's good. Uh, it's, thank you for that hearty chuckle. I appreciate that. <laughs> Alright, we're just flying by these guys. I want to get I want to get to the end of this mission. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes left. And as you guys know, I like to be uh, much more observant of what you guys are talking about to engage with you and all that type of stuff. In these last couple of minutes so if you have any questions based on everything that you've seen today especially as we've been having a, a lot of fun with the fusion hook um and also through this parasite mission i mean i can't tell you too much about the mission itself uh, other than let you watch it but uh if you have any questions about any aspect of development we again we got about 13 minutes left so ask away and I will do my best to cover you. And if there's, for some reason, my inability to answer your question comes up, you can always reach us at the Discord and Ask Dev Questions channel is there for you to utilize. And if I don't jump in at, uh, to answer, a community member who knows the answer will. And if they don't jump in because they don't know the answer, I will make sure that my, my buddies will uh, fully, fully uh, hook you guys up with those details. Now, if you're asking for hyper specific details, like, well, what happens after Adam does this specific thing in the storyline, and we haven't revealed it yet, we're not, we're not gonna, that's not, we're not gonna tell you, like, <laughs> but if it's pertaining to developer uh, materials. Pango from downloading our logs this time. I wanna be very careful with the information he receives on the virus. Who knows what he might do with it? A wise choice. I am now aware of his techniques and will attempt to prevent all data breaches. Good. Cool. All right, so we're gonna finish this up, then I'm gonna check out your conversations and we will have some dialogue. Wonderful, you're back in one piece. Let me check the data you've gathered. Not so fast. First, we need to talk. I thought we were clear on the terms of our agreement. You get my software. And in return, I get to assess its performance. Your software performed like scrap. Oh. When I reached the signal, my systems crashed worse than ever. So I don't owe you a thing. There was always a chance that it wouldn't work. It would have been rather silly to guarantee you protection from something you only gave me vague clues about. Had I known, for example, that you were planning to scavenge the Nordborg, I would have equipped you with something more robust. No questions asked. How do you... 
Oh, scrap, you had my old logs all along. Indeed, but sadly, I was only able to assess them after you had already left. Had you been more open towards me, I could have warned you earlier. Wouldn't you agree? I can see where this is going. I won't show you my logs. Not until you tell me what else you already know. Well, of course. It's not as if I had something to hide from you, Adam. Let us start with the jamming signal itself. Which is, to be honest, the least interesting part of the story. From your previous logs, I gathered that it was specifically designed to indiscriminately jam everything that runs on power. There is no nuance or finesse to it. A setup like that is commonly known as an oscillator cage. Building one is child's play, at least for me. Of course it is. Just like with every cage, it is not the cage itself that is the most fascinating aspect about it, but the thing that it is holding. So I dug deeper, and this is what I found. During the war, your people poured an obscene amount of resources into virus technology that would enable the colonial fleet to take over our enemy craft. Since Okar technology was new to the colonials, they had to develop a program to assess the workings of any alien ship, then exploit its weaknesses. Something that was able to learn and adapt at unprecedented speed. There are classified reports of one such experiment that went awry while its carrier ship was on its way to the Okar homeworlds. The CEV Nordborg. The virus turned against its own vessel. In order to stop it, the Colonials had to quickly set up an oscillator cage to ground it for good. If a virus like this still exists in the DMZ, it will cause much trouble, even for me. That is why I'm so eager to learn whether this is simply a rumor or something we need to seriously worry about. Oh, you can definitely start worrying about it, all right. Because the damn thing got away. So you did encounter it. But then how did you manage to withstand its influence? Frankly, I have no idea. You really ought to show me your logs, Adam. It may be the only way for me to develop a countermeasure. I've... I don't like this. I do not either. But given the severity of the threat, I fail to see any alternatives. All right, I'm sending them over. A very smart choice. I will call you once I've figured out what needs to happen next. You better. Come on, I. let's get out of here. And that's the end of the Parasite mission. Completely done, nothing else is coming later, no plans to continue. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent! Oh my goodness! So Salt actually asks, why didn't it jam our ship, but only the AI? In the terms of Adam himself, he says, frankly, I have no idea. Oh, man. Adam's voice actor, he nailed how salty that, of course it is, line was delivered. Oh, man, yeah, absolutely. No, we, we love, we love Ray Chase. He is fantastic voice actor. And he's in a lot of things, too. He does a lot of things. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I was about to write if you weren't joking. Oh, goodness gravy. Oh, my gosh. That that would be, like, the most infuriated cliffhanger for us to drop. It's like, okay, well, you have to wait for Everspace 2 to release in 2022, and that's all you get. But when Everspace 3 comes out in 2035, or whatever it's going to be, like, goodness, no, we're not going <laughs> to... You get the follow-up. Everspace 3, the parasitening. No, God. Goodness gravy, guys. <laughs> we have plans. I'm not going to tell you what those plans look like. But uh, I digress. Any community stuff this week? I did not have the time to prepare. We had some other uh, important meetings go down today, which things are good in the land of Rockfish Games. I just want to point that out. Um, your support from all you guys, like your financial support, your engagements, which means a lot, your wish listing us, your leaving feedback, your lead, like you guys have been tremendous in helping Rockfish get to the position that we are. We still have a lot to do. We still have a ton of stuff to do. Yes, we are veterans in the industry, but we are still an indie team. And there's a lot that we have to wrap our heads around and prepare and move forward accordingly with. So, um, that being said, because you have enabled more opportunities for us to pursue 
and flesh out. Um, yeah, like sometimes it requires some more nuance to approach these streams with a what the hell am I doing and just kind of wing it. <laughs> As opposed to have all the components built up, ready to go. Um, obviously, we still want to have a lot of fun, like, you know, showcasing the physics of the uh, fusion hook. I showed you guys where to get it at the very, very start of the stream. I'll leave you guys up to figuring out how to unlock it. Uh, but I hope that you'll have as much fun as I did in just screwing around and messing with opponents. Uh, I can't believe we pulled an enemy into another passing enemy to make them both collide. That was so, so freaking good. I'm sharing that clip with all my friends being like, look what I can do. Because you know, I was hundred percent intended, but man, it's great. Man, a lot of people have asked me that question, John, about me doing voice work. I mean, it's a possibility. Um, I don't think there's any immediacy to it because uh, we we actually, we use uh, uh, the same agency. I'm pretty confident we use the same agency we used whenever we were using uh, uh, voice acting work for Everspace One, which is also how we're getting a lot of the same talent coming back. Uh, granted, we do have to make a couple of adjustments. It's, such is game development, such as any development, really. So, um, we'll have some subtle nods and whatnot because the voices of other members of the team are actually in the game even as of right now so there's that <laughs> so maybe i could pop up yeah, maybe will could pop up maybe michael our ceo will pop up and say something real cheeky i'd love it but uh who knows we're certainly having fun but we're also we're a professional team we want to make sure we're locking everything down and bring it to you the best way it possibly can be Excellent. Everspace 3, the mobile freemium edition? Nah, we ain't going back to mobile. Nope, we are not touching that with a 10-foot pole. I think that is how the phrase goes. <laughs> oh, I got, I got a long post from Paranoid Carrot. Is there a rabbit nearby? I'm not quite sure I understand the username, but uh, can you make the player's shield disable sound a bit more obvious so the sound cue would be clearly heard in a midst of a frenzy um is it not visible enough is it not loud enough i should say i feel like it's pretty bold and also the visual effect is pretty bold uh personally but um that could be something that we evaluate but yeah it's i yeah, I mean, we can talk about that paranoid carrot. If you if you have an idea as to what that would need to look like, you should head on over to the Steam forums and post your suggestion over there and be like, check this out. I am a person who really appreciates the beauty of combat and when I'm distracted by it, I don't quite know when my shields go down and this is why and I think that this could be done to rectify that situation. Man, I type quickly, don't I? You drop that information down, there might be other people who could dive in with you to say, I agree or I disagree. And if we can start forming some ideas of how to shape and change the game to better everyone's experience or the majority, then we might take action. I highly, highly encourage you to do so. If there was a contest for sexiest ships, your game would definitely win. Thank you. Uh, I will give Matthias, the 3D designer of the player ships, straight up love for that one i will just give him a kiss virtually because i'm in america and he's in germany don't worry about that oh my gosh such a delight he does fantastic work doesn't he and you haven't even seen all of it oh baby that's good he does he'll, his work is amazing his work is amazing all right so uh what else did i miss uh are there any plans to update the icons at all like more commun commodity icons make weapon icons matching the models and stuff yes there are plans. I can't get into more detail than that, but I can say there are plans. Why didn't it jam it? Okay, we already covered that. Mainframe override, yes. I can't confirm a future content, but I will say that we've already uh, brought back a lot of material from Everspace One and mainframe override wasn't Everspace One, so I'm saying there's a chance. I'm saying there's a chance. Uh, let's see, what else did I miss? Will you be doing, uh, oh no, we already got that. Uh, Everspace Three confirmed, not quite. I think it would be amazing if we could do that. Vote Eric for camera. You guys are crazy. I appreciate it. Oh, Bernie Duffy. Oh, 
Dude! <laughs> Hello, Bernie. Oh, what a pleasure. <laughs> what a pleasure. <laughs> I didn't even realize you snuck in there. I was like reading that name. I know who you are. And you do, you do sound work as well. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what we can do. Uh, quite loud, especially with recharge or kill perk or being shot by a fast firing weapon. Oh, reprinting the shield. Got it, got it, got it. Um, guys, I have like one minute until my wife is going to bring me down a baby. I am going to hold lay baby. Uh, baby. Um, she's got to go pick up my daughter from school. So, um, I should probably transition out. So if there were any questions that I missed, if I missed anything, guys, I seriously implore you, head on over to the Discord in particular, that discord.gg slash rockfishgames. There is a space that's called Ask Dev Questions channel, entirely devoted for you, for us to serve you. You say, hey, Eric, you didn't answer this in the stream because you ignored me and my feelings are hurt. You suck, but also this is my question. And plop it down there. We will get a response to it. I guarantee you that. Um, how much information we can share if you're like trying to get added detail of what's to come. It's gonna be less likely, but if you're just looking for clarity on anything that I've shown or talked about or made public, by all means, we are happy to assist and direct. You guys are amazing in all things. I just, I really appreciate you. All the questions have been so freaking amazing today. Uh, you have been awesome. And I have been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for all things Everspace 2 related, your servant in the community. Don't stop being awesome. I will catch you next week. And we might have some new stuff to show. All right, toodles. Oh, whoops, double sound there, my bad. My children need me, I must go into dad mode. And next week, Next week, yes, yes, next week.